if you don't know how it's like to um, do lessons on um, YouTube, it's 5.50 right now and this is my eighth video. So after a while it can get very tiring. <laughs> so, sorry, I have all these messages later on. We're gonna go ahead and deal with polar coordinates. Um, this lesson here just deals typically with, it's a combination of trigonometry and the unit circle and like radius just in general. Polar coordinates, how they are looked at, they are coordinates, but they're a different type of coordinates. They're not X and Y anymore. The polar coordinates are now R comma theta. Theta is just the angle, so they're gonna give it to you in radians. R is like the radius. And think of, um, yeah, they're in radians basically, sorry about that. Here, if we have, um, you, Graph them just like angles, so they look like angles. They're just a little bit different because R is the radius, and if R is a positive number or it's zero and above, so you're gonna have your radius here. It's going to be graphed at whatever angle it actually is, so it doesn't matter how it's gonna look. You're gonna graph it, you're gonna have your O, which is your um, starting point, it's your ray, it's that center here, your vertex, and then you're gonna have P of R and your um, radians. If you have R being less than zero, you're gonna graph it accordingly with normal. So let's say radians is, you know, pi over eight or something like that. So you graph it at normal, but then when you have it less, you're gonna graph a line on the opposite direction, exactly across, and you have dotted lines like that. So example one, we're gonna graph these. These are very simple to graph. Here we have one comma three radians over four. You have your radius and you have your um, degree. If you look at three radians over four, that is actually 135 degrees. You don't even need this to help you out. You can do three times 180, uh, radians is 180. So three times 180 divided by four is about 125 degrees. If you were to graph that, you would have an angle like this. You don't have to draw your cross anymore, just draw the given angle. So we have the angle here. This is three radians over four. This is radius. So this is always going to be O. Your vertex is always going to be O. You have your um, line here. So this is your like terminal point. This is your starting point. The ending point here is considered your radius. Your radius is considered one. And when you graph these, this point right here is going to be your polar coordinate. So it's gonna be one comma three radians over four. It's one unit away. You have your radians here. You have your vertex. And you have your polar coordinate, it's your radius and your degree. B, again, radius, degree, um, graph the degree first is negative radians over six. Radians over six is usually like that, but negative is the opposite direction. So you have something going like this. So this is a terminal point. This is your radians, which is negative radians over six. It's not negative because your R is positive. So that means you're not gonna have the dotted line. It's only the dotted line if your R is negative. In this case here, it's not, so it's a positive three. So your other side is considered your um, radius, which is three, or your, I don't know if it's radius, it's just distance. But here, since it's three units away, we have these things, I call them like weird tick marks. You have to evenly divide that line into three parts. So from the vertex of O to P, which is the coordinate, three comma negative radians over six, we have three parts to it, one, two, and three. So then your polar coordinate is three comma negative radians over six. You have your coordinate and then you have your degree. See, three comma three radians. So if you were to graph three radians, uh, three radians is like a line. So when we have our graph, we have um, radians over two. And I'm mainly gonna focus on the X axis. We have a radians and this is two radians. So then three radians will be another turn back up to um, where the radiance is. It's a coterminal angle with radiance. So if I were to draw it, again, I'm not drawing the T. So we go here, I'm labeling this as O. So this is gonna be one radiance, go back around, this is two radiance, go back around, then this will be three radiance. And that's how you would have to graph it. So it's a circle indicating that you're going around the whole unit circle, two radiance, and going until three radiance here. Here we have we graphed our angle, now we have to graph our radius. So from the center point, we have to create three even lines. That's as even as I'm gonna get. 
So I have one part here, two, three, three. So I have to create three parts. If the radius is 100, I am going to create 100 equal parts, but they won't go that high. Now, my polar coordinate is 3, comma, 3 radians. And that's it. Last one, negative 4 and then radians over 4. First graph, negative, or radians over 4, which is something like this. Radians over 4, I believe it's 60 or it's, four, it's 45. So you have radians over 4. You have your angle there, I created it. But remember when it's a, a negative, you have to create a line on the opposite side of that radius. So the radius is here, but it's gonna be a negative four, so it's gonna be a line going across from it, which is right here. So when it's negative, it's the opposite line, you're gonna create a dotted line, and you also have to split it into four parts. So it'll be like one, two, So one part, two part, three part, and that's four parts. And then your polar coordinate is negative four radians over four. So that's the only difference. Um, when you have negative um, radius, you have to make sure you have to graph in the opposite direction. So wherever that original terminal line or the original part is um, graphed from. So from here, just opposite. Think of a line, that's all you have to do. When you're thinking of polar coordinates, there are like coterminal angles, just like, um, this is 180, but if you add um, two radians to it, or if this is radians, if you add two radians to it, you'll get three radians. If you add two more radians to that, you'll have five radians. If you subtract radians from two radians, you have negative radians. So those are all coterminal angles because they're from the same side. Polar coordinates are exactly the same way. So you can have this, but you can have so many different um, coordinates that describe this graph right here. So to do that, we have an equation here. So if your radius, let's say, they always focus on the radius portion. Let's say the radius is greater than zero. So let's say instead of two, they have seven or they have eight. So if it's greater than zero, what you do is you have your radius, it stays the same, but you add two radians or you subtract two radians. And then for um, radians that's less than zero, you make your radius, you make your radius negative and then you add or subtract a radian to it. So just one radian, not two radians. So let's go ahead and do example two. Example two, we talk about two different things. First thing, part A, they just want us to graph it. So we have two and then radians over three. Radians over three is 60. Yep, 60 degrees. 60 is like this. Radians over three. And then this will be two. I don't know how they graph it. What do they put? Oh, they don't put anything for it. I just do that. So now here, you have to divide into two parts, so I put the line here. You have P being 2 radians over 3, and that's how you graph it. Very simple. B, what they want us to do is find two other polar coordinates, uh, representations of P with R greater than 0. So they want two additional coordinates for this graph, for R being greater than 0, and two with R less than zero. So we want four all together. So there are so many different cold terminal angles. You can keep on going and going and going. But in this case here, we're gonna go ahead and just do these four here. So R being greater than zero, according to this, you add two radians or you can subtract two radians. Or they have the end there, that means you can do two times two radians, so that's four radians, but it's in um, intervals of two radians. So you can, um, add or subtract by two radians, by four radians, by six radians, and there's a pattern there. So here, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna add. So we're gonna have our P, we're gonna add two radians to it. So plus two radians. So now to get our polar coordinate, we're gonna add two radians to it. So now when you add two radians to it, our new graph will be, we'll put one here, Two, your radius, your R stays the same, but one third plus two, that's why I think of it when I think of fractions, one third plus two, when you add those two together, you get seven thirds or seven radians over three. That is one polar coordinate. Let's try another one. Let's go ahead and subtract um, by two radians. So again, two, the R stays the same. Uh, radians over three, we're gonna subtract by two radians. You can subtract by four radians, subtract by 20 radians. It has to be in groups of two radians. So now, when you do that, now we have our second one. We have two comma, when you subtract this, we get negative five radians over three. 
and that's your second one. Again, there is a lot of different answers for these. Now, let's go ahead and do radians, or the r that's less than zero. So we're gonna try to find polar coordinates, the same exact graph, with r being less than zero. That means you make your radius, your r, negative. It's always going to be negative. And on top of that, you add or subtract by 180. So we're gonna add by 180 on this part here. So we make this a negative, so it shows you the change. So you make that negative, and you add or subtract by radians. Now we go ahead and solve. This is my third one. I get negative two. Um, this was radians over three. That's from my original problem. So radians over three plus one, I get four radians over three. That's my third one. Let's try one more. So we have negative two. We always make it a negative. And then I'm gonna subtract by a radian. And they have that whole equation there. It just has to be in intervals of radians. So radians, two radians, three radians, four radians. I can subtract by 20 radians. I can add by uh, 27 radians. So it really doesn't matter. It's just by intervals of radians. Now, we go ahead and solve for this. I'm gonna do minus radians to show you the difference. Now we go solve. We get negative two. And then one third minus one. So I always include the radians on top. So one third minus one, I get negative two thirds or negative two radians over three. And that's my fourth um, one. If you were to graph these, you'll all end up with the same graph and you'll have similar graphs like this, but that's how it would be. So your homework is just getting used to it. Um, I'm gonna decide if I want you guys to graph or not. Just check your homework and see what I have you to do. I might change my mind. I don't know. I'm tired, I can't think anymore. If you have any more questions, let me know. Email me down there. I love you guys, miss you guys. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.